Hello, I am back with another video and today's episode we will talk about Michael Jackson aka the King of Pop. Before I get into it, I want to say thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. It really means a lot. It motivates me to continue making videos. My goal is to get 1000 subscribers so the more subscribers I get, the better my videos get shown. So thank you. Disclaimer, I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about the celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel and it is just for entertainment purposes only. So please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Michael Jackson was born in Gary, Indiana near Chicago on August 29, 1958. His parents were Catherine Jackson and Joe Jackson and he was the eighth of ten children. Catherine was a homemaker and Joe had three jobs, one being an operator in the U.S. Steel. Michael had a good relationship with Catherine, but when it came to Joseph it was rough. Joseph wouldn't allow his children to call him daddy and they would only address him as Joseph. Joseph abused Michael, he would beat him with his hands or with an ironing cord. Joe will also beat Catherine too and the Jackson kids will play a game pretending that Joseph is dead and not feeling sorry at all. Michael's parents were Jehovah's Witnesses, so they did not believe in celebrating Christmas or birthdays. Which really upset Michael because he wanted to experience what other families do during the holidays. However, when it came to music, Michael found solace. He would sing with his brothers as well as dance and have songwriting competitions. The Jackson 5 started when Tito took Joseph's guitar without his permission. He broke one of the strings and he got beaten for it. No one was not allowed to touch Joseph's guitar. But Joseph found out how talented his children were and decided to turn them into a band. In 1963, the Jackson Brothers was formed and they began to perform in talent shows and competitions. Michael didn't join the band until 1966 and renamed the band to the Jackson 5 and Joe became their manager. Joe enforced long and grueling hours of rehearsals and he wouldn't give them a break until their songs and routines were polished. Michael grew up on stage and in nightclubs. He saw striptease girls naked and fights break out and people throwing up and adults acting like pigs. He was only eight years old and he had already lost his innocence. In 1967, the Jackson 5 won a talent competition at the Apollo Theater in New York. Two years later, Joe signed a contract with Motown and the Jackson 5 was introduced to the world by Diana Ross with their bubblegum soul sound. Fun fact, it was not Diana that discovered Jackson 5, it was Gladys Knight who sent a demo to Barry Gordy at Motown. Diana saw potential within the group and encouraged Barry to listen to them. With Michael as the lead singer, Motown released two singles such as I Want You Back and Who's Loving You to go on to sell 2 million copies in 6 weeks. With Diana's star power, they took over the world and they were adored by fans. Once they became famous and the money started to flow, Joe got strict. During rehearsals, Joe will sit in a chair with a belt in his hand, watching and making sure that they do not make any mistake. With them being famous, they attracted a lot of female fans. At a young age, Michael was exposed to groupies. He witnessed his brothers with groupies in hotels. On occasions, they tried to make Michael lose his virginity by hiring prostitutes. Young Michael had an intervention which was about him losing his virginity. They locked him in a room with two hookers. He picked up a Bible and started reading the scripture to them. The pumpers left the room, shaking, and young Michael was crying and he was traumatized by that experience. Another incident occurred in New York City. A prostitute named Lilius Harris was asked to provide services to Michael. Michael was repulsed by that offer and instead wanted to talk about life, which Lilius didn't want to talk about. She left and gave Michael her phone number when he changed his mind. Michael never liked the idea of sex or nudity. It made him extremely uncomfortable. After much success, they had in the late 60s. In the early 70s, their career began to plummet on the charts. After Michael and Jermaine went on their solo career, the band couldn't top the chart without Michael. Michael recorded a song called Got To Be There and Ben as a soloist. Michael returned to the group and released songs such as Get It Together and Dancing Machine. They tried to come up with more hit songs but failed. They got fed up with Motown not producing hit songs for them and decided to leave the company in 1975. Jermaine didn't return to the band and decided to stay with Motown. They decided to sign with Epic Records with Epic Records. They got better deals like getting 20% of royalties of their music. However, they had to change their name to the Jacksons. They released an album with songs such as Enjoy Yourself and Show You The Way To Go. The album didn't do great when it came to sales. They released another album called Destiny, which did great and released another album called Triumph. Michael also began to work on his solo album, Off The Wall. Michael's solo career skyrocketed with his fifth solo album, Off The Wall. He gave us hits such as Rock With You and Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. The album was produced by Quincy Jones and they both met while working on the film, The Wiz. With the success of the album, people began to speculate that Michael was leaving the group. In the 80s, Michael released his sixth studio album, Thriller. 
Michael gave us hits such as Beat It, Thriller, and Billy Jean. With this album, he received great reviews and was named late 20th century's preeminent pop icon. The Thriller music video was almost tarnished because Jehovah Witness leaders had a problem with it because it was demonic, and if he does not destroy it, they will excommunicate him. But the Thriller video was released without Michael's approval. In 1987, he released his seventh studio album, Bad. With this album, Michael gave us hits such as Bad, Dirty Diana, and Smooth Criminal. With Bad, Michael and Prince were supposed to co-star, but Prince didn't like the lyrics and changes needed to be made. Michael disagreed and moved on. With Dirty Diana, people believed that it was about Diana Ross and her relationship with Michael. Michael was desperately in love with Diana when he was a kid. Michael would spend the night at Diana's house during the Motown era. She would take him to places like museums and eventually he moved in with her. Diana was giving young Michael Jackson so much attention that it was not normal. People have stated that Diana Ross made Michael perform oral sex on her. Allegedly, Diana Ross led Michael on and told him that when he becomes a man, then they can have a relationship. Michael believed this until he reached adulthood. They had sexual intercourse, but that was it. Diana played with him like he was a toy and threw him away when she was done with him. When Diana Ross was getting married, this hurt him and he wanted to be the one to marry her. This man was obsessed with Diana to the point that he began to copy her mannerism and actually believed that he was going to spend the rest of his life with her in Switzerland. After the incident with Diana, Michael began to change. He began to sleep with groupies. He also began to own heterosexual adult film collection. He started to eat junk food and drink Red Bull, wine, and vodka more often. He also started to enjoy casual sex often and became promiscuous. He cheated on many of his previous girlfriends, including his two wives, Lisa and Debbie. He was also ostracized by Jehovah Witnesses when the Smooth Criminal video was released into mainstream on the hit single Bad. People noticed that Michael has gotten some work done. For example, people noticed that he has bleached his skin and gotten a nose job. Back then, people didn't know that Michael had vitiligo. During the 90s through the 2000s, Michael released three more studio albums, but it had mixed reviews. In the 90s, he released Dangerous, which had hits such as Black or White and Remember the Time. And in 1995, he released History, Past, Present, and Future. In its songs such as Scream with Janet, They Don't Care About Us, and Earth's Song. Michael's final album was Invincible in 2001. The only song on the album which hit the chart was You Rock My World. For all the success he had, Michael was suffering internally. Record executives and his family were making money off him. Everybody around him was happy, but he was not. Nobody cared what Michael was feeling as long as he was making money. And the sad part is that he was very lonely. He had a hard time making friends and he only found friendship with children instead of adults. At his home, he would keep mannequins and give them names and personalities. Michael was very vulnerable and insecure even with his appearance. Joe was not shy about insulting Michael's appearance. Joe will make fun of his nose and his African features. When Michael reached adulthood, he started to notice that he was starting to look like his father. Michael solved his problem with plastic surgery such as getting six nose jobs, to the point that his nose started to cave in and his nose had to be rebuilt with fillers. Michael also got a procedure for a cleft chin. He also had faced surgery. Every surgery you can think of Michael has gotten it. Within two years, Michael has gotten 10 to 12 surgeries. He chose to get surgeries because he didn't want to look like his father and he was consistently told that he was ugly with his wide nose. When Michael was going through puberty and having acne on his face, Joe called him fat and pizza face. Michael has been accused of being a pedophile. In 1993, he was accused by Jordan Chandler of sexual abuse, masturbation, and oral sex. His own sister, Latoya Jackson, accused him of pedophilia but then denied it. When police raided his home, they found nude images and books of boys, but they said it was legal to own. After his passing, Michael had tons of footage of him frolicking in a hotel room with boys. Also, there is a documentary called Leaving Neverland. It focuses on two men, Wade Robson and James Safechuck, who alleged they were sexually abused by Michael. It is worth watching, so check it out. Michael had countless medical issues, such as a severely broken nose and several attempts at surgical repair, severe scalp burns from an ad mishap, and drug addiction resulting from the painkillers that helped him. In 1984, during a Pepsi commercial, Michael's hair caught on fire. That night, not only did he experience a second and third degree burn to his scalp and body, but he was also introduced to the world of plastic surgery and pain medication. In 1999, during rehearsal, he broke his spine and was rushed to the hospital. The doctors gave Michael tons of pain medication, and after that incident, back pain and pain medication became essential to his life. In the 90s, Michael developed an addiction to propofol. He would take them when he couldn't sleep and referred to it as his milk. 
He tried to go to rehab to beat the habit, but failed. In 2006, Michael met Dr. Conrad Murray and wanted him to be his primary physician. Dr. Murray kept prescribing for Pawfall and Benzodiazepine even though he knew that he was developing codependency from the drugs. Murray will give him 25 milligrams of Pawfall at the night of his death. Michael also had a tragic love life as well. Many people suspect that Michael might be homosexual, but that was not the case. Michael had a hard time forming a romantic connection to his former spouses and girlfriends. Fame and obsession were the reason that caused it. Michael could never escape the fame that comes with being a celebrity. All the dates he has been on, they only care about his fame and his music. Michael wanted a woman who can see past that and have a connection with. The only relationship that was genuine was the relationship he had with Lisa Marie Presley and Debbie Rowe. Both women cared about Michael and wanted what was best for him. However, the relationship didn't last long because both relationships were destroyed by public scrutiny. The love of his life was Diana Ross, but I believe that Michael never understood what love was and he mistook obsession as love. June 25, 2009, Michael Jackson passed away from cardiac arrest from acute propofol and benzodiazepine intoxication. So, what can we learn from Michael's life story? We can choose to love him or hate him. But we cannot deny the music that he has given to society. Michael has taught us to love, to know what is right and wrong, allow spirit to move us, have compassion, embrace diversity, and know what other people are experiencing in life. The world we live in is hypocritical and we only care about appearance and not the person. Michael taught us to be different and to think for ourselves. Michael taught us to have a strong belief system and that the government does not care about its people. Now people might say, oh, how can you support the pedophile? Michael Jackson was a flawed human being just like us. He had a dark side. Some say that he was extremely greedy and manipulative, but as fans and viewers, we don't personally know Michael at all. We can only know and understand Michael through his music. He had a lot of demons that he couldn't beat. Only God will know what happened between him and the victims. Rest in peace, Michael. All right, guys, thank you for watching my video. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be back with another video. Happy Black History Month.